Hi folks, welcome back. Craig Suriani here, owner and operator of Craig Suriani Vocal Studios here in New York. Welcome to video number three of explaining, demonstrating, and unlocking those secrets of the Lamonaco technique. This video will specifically address today low laryngeal singing and why that's important and how to achieve it. Now before we get to that, is anyone else out there but me getting incredibly tired of reading all of the negativity on YouTube about all of these forums and, and making fun of opera singers today and even you know very well-known ones, very popular ones. I know I'm getting tired of it. Tom LaMonaco, who was my teacher and who this video series is based upon, was one of the most positive influences of my life, folks. He would never have approved of any of this negativity. Tom celebrated good technique, and he was always upbeat and positive, like me. Studying voice does not have to be done with somebody who's surly and intimidating and make, making you feel horrible the whole time. Just the opposite, in fact, positive reinforcement. Okay, that was one of the most important things I learned from Tom because that's how he operated and that's what he did. He made you feel like a million dollars right after that lesson and when I walked out, there was no doubt in my brain that I was doing the right thing. That was Tom Lamonaco and I don't care if somebody out there claims that they were his butler for 10 years. If you don't have the same resume that I do, that's where the, again, that's where the rubber meets the road, folks. Now. Speaking of this negativity, have you been noticing that all the ranting and complaints and raving about how horrible opera today is fail to address the real issue? And the real issue is where are the resources today to offer a solution to this problem of where are all the big singers and big voices today? Well, first of all, you're looking at one of the solutions, me. Okay, and the very reason for this video series is one of those solutions as well. Now, on to what low laryngeal singing is and how to achieve it and how to make it happen. All sound, and most singers know this, all sound begins in the larynx or the laryngeal area, which is where your Adam's apple is. Here. So, it's better than my vocal cords are right there. So, just behind where, where the, superior not high, uh, the superior thyroid notch is here, or your Adam's apple. That's where all sound begins, because that's where your chords are. Now, however, it is the pharynx, or the pharyngeal area, that has the biggest impact on the quality and the color and the size of the sound. Of all styles of singing, opera requires the biggest pharyngeal area. And we want it big because that's where we get resonance. Okay, the bigger the chamber, the more resonance we're going to get. Because opera singing is the biggest, roundest, darkest, loudest style that we have today. Okay, it is the last and only style that is supposed to be delivered with no microphone. That's why it needs to be so big. And I say supposed to be because I don't know what's going on out there today. But when I sang, there was no microphone and there was no sound reinforcement of any kind. Now, your pharyngeal area is basically where your soft palate begins to the back wall of your throat. It's not a very big space at all, folks. And you can feel this where your soft palate begins and kind of feel, you know, or imagine where the back wall of your throat is. It's not a lot of space. We want to make that bigger. So, how do we make it bigger? Well, there's two directions we can go. We can go up, we can go down, or we can go both. Okay, and that'll give you the biggest space that you're looking for. Now, first, going up, we need to become accustomed to raising the soft palate. That will give you the space in the upward direction that you're looking for. Now, everybody who knows me and has watched other videos knows that I can't stand having to rely on any kind of imagery, but unfortunately one that does work fairly well 
is explaining to people that raising the soft palate is basically the same kind of feel as when you take a great big yawn. That feeling in, in the yawn of that big stretch, that's your soft palate going rising and stretching open. And so we learn to do this on purpose. And every time I take in the air, I am purposely pulling my soft palate up. That's space in the upper direction. Where else can we get space? Well, as I said before, down, okay? Now, this is going to require lowering your larynx or low laryngeal singing. Now, go ahead, folks. I want to see everybody do this. Lower your larynx. Okay, obviously, you cannot. That's why I made the joke. Uh, your laryngeal area is not a conscious muscular place where we can just think about it and your larynx will just go sliding down. Remember the video about breathing where we had to do one thing in order to achieve another thing? To get your diaphragm to drop, we have to billow the lungs out first. You can't just think about lowering your diaphragm. This basically works the same way. Many physical positions in opera singing are not possible by merely thinking about it, but are achieved by first moving something that we can move consciously and then reaping the rewards of the secondary response that the first movement creates. Okay, so again, just like the breathing in the diaphragm. So first, in order to get the larynx to drop down, we have to do a few things, folks. We have to drop the jaw, we have to flare the lips. We have to show your teeth. Retract the tongue. Now, I'm going to get to tongue positioning in another video because there's a lot to talk about. That in and of itself is a whole video. So I won't be going into that detail today, but all the rest of the, uh, the positions I will be. Now to sum up what I just talked about, it looks like this. Now, why do we always see pictures of opera singers doing this all the time? And we do. Every picture you see, they're always like this, because those are people who are singing professionally, have been trained properly, and their teachers understood this. That's why we have photos that look like that. Let me show you a couple. Here's one of me. Take a look at my jaw position, folks. Hopefully you can see that okay. There's a, there's a high note. By the way, this was a concert in Edmonton, Alberta. That was me. And that was Luciano Pavarotti. Ask your teacher if they got any pictures of Luciano together with them or Domingo or anybody else, just for fun. Um, now... So we make this space and we make this gesture, and yes, I understand it's not a pretty gesture, but remember, it flies in the face of the myth of standing here and smiling and, you know, hoping that Puccini and Verdi come flying out. Forget it. It's never going to happen. This space, now this space, of course, is pitch dependent as well. The higher we go, the more we're going to have to open to accommodate those notes, and we'll be getting into that in another video series as well. Now, for rock singing, pop singing, does the pharyngeal area color the sound? Yes, of course. It always colors every sound. But is it as important to make that kind of space in that style of singing? No, in my opinion, not. Even the most aggressive rock singing, for example, wow! that does not require any kind of pharyngeal space at all. That's a high, bright, mixed sound, but I don't think about my pharyngeal area for that. If I'm singing an operatic piece, then I have to. <clears throat> and that's where you'll see that shape come back into play again. That's the big pharyngeal space, and that's where that sound comes from. Can't be done any other way. 
can't be done any other way. I just signed a new student the other day, folks, um, who told basically about the same story as most of my Skype students who show up. He's working with a teacher, and I said to him, as I'm showing him all this, I said, by the way, did your teacher show you this? Did he demonstrate? And the answer was from the student, unbelievably, well, no, not really, because uh, he couldn't really sing. <laughs> now, I don't know about you folks, but when I think about a concept like that, I'm thinking, okay, you're paying somebody who can't sing to show you how to sing. Think about that. Roll that one around for a while. That's what's out there, folks. That's what we're dealing with. That's why I'm making the video series that I'm making. And I'll get to my contact information at the end of the video if you're so if you're so inclined and interested. Now let's see where we are. Please remember again, folks, that what I'm showing you is based on 25 years of successful stage experience, singing leading tenor roles all worldwide. If your current teacher cannot make the same claim, you can find my contact info in the description below. Uh, to inquire about Skype lessons or in-person studio lessons. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to this channel to continue following this series as it unfolds. Until next time, ciao.